Good morning, everyone. Hope you had a great time at the party yesterday. You had your coffee. You're all awake. Uh, I would like to really start by thanking uh, DLD Chairman Mr. Yossi Vardi and Steffi for giving me this stage to address you. Uh, it's not uh, usually that you hear about Palestine in these uh, kind of uh, tech conferences. To be honest, if you think about the first image that comes to mind when I talk about Palestine, what would it be? Just think about it a little bit. It would be something along these lines usually, right? Or this, you know, yes, we have our share of conflict, we have our share of uh, uh, war, but you, Palestine is much more than that. Palestine has much more than that. We have, for example, Yam Safar, which is the largest travel company in the Middle East. This is a company that attracted investment, VC investment, from a German venture capital from Rocket Internet. And this is now the largest travel. It's the booking of the Middle East. We have Mashvisor, 35 Palestinian engineers and salespeople selling real estate, uh, real estate tech to the US markets. Not locally, not in the region. They're making it in the US from Ramallah. We have Red Crow. Red Crow is still a small company. But it is the first in the world to have a commercial product out of Arabic language, natural language processing abilities. Arabic, if anybody knows Arabic here, you know it's a very hard language. It has many dialects. The companies like Google, Siri, for example, and all of these uh, things, Alexa, Siri, you cannot really use them in Arabic because of the Arabic language uh, difficulties. They are making it in a commercial manner in, uh, in Palestine and from Palestine. This is Gaza. This is not the typical image you see in Gaza, usually. This is a co-working space in Gaza. Young people trying to make startups and entrepreneurships in a co-working space in Gaza. They have three hours of electricity a day and no 3G, and they're still making startups. This is a lot of resilience, and this is a lot of the attributes and characteristics that you will look for in, when you look for to invest in, uh, in startups. Just to give you a number, this is not a story about scale. This is not a story about big numbers. This is a story about quality. We have four and a half million population in the West Bank and Gaza. 96% literacy rate. This is the highest percent of literacy rate in the Arab world. 34,000 university grads every year. 2,500 engineering grads every year. Yet the result of the conflict and the war that we have 50% unemployment rate among university graduates. So that basically, you know, somebody could see as an opportunity because these guys don't have ready employment places, so they have to create their own destiny. They have to create their own fate. So they create companies to work on. They create their own workplaces. So this is where it all comes from. It's a necessity. It's not anything but survival. They have to create their own startups in order to survive. We have starting to see the support organization in Palestine, the incubators and accelerators, the infrastructure that is uh, around this. We are seeing the co-working spaces that you would see in everywhere uh, else in the world as well. We have the major events that you see probably in many European cities like Get in the Ring, Slush, we have a Seed Stars co competition, and we have, are seeing that Palestinian startups are winning this competition, of course, in the region, but also on some international level. The MIT Enterprise Forum winner was a Palestinian startup. The Get in the Ring Globe, the Europe winner was a Palestinian startup as well. <coughs> Sorry. This is a story, when we talk about the ecosystem, entrepreneurship ecosystem, it's the story of the last decade only. It's not very old. It's just started in 2011 with the first VC fund in, that operated in Palestine. 
Then in 2012, it was the first investment. An accelerator followed. We started Ibtikar Fund, the fund that I manage in 2015. And in 2015 as well, we had the first international VC investment in Palestine. So this is not something that has been around for ages, but it's been the story of the last decade. Since then, the trajectory has been very impressive. A 34% KGAR growth in the startup creation in Palestine. This is World Bank data, and we have today about 220 active startups in Palestine for a population of four and a half million uh, people. In our ecosystem, there's an impressive uh, trend, which is the number of female founders. It's 23% female founders. <laughs> this is better than Beirut, better than Cairo, and even better than New York. There's one thing that we beat New York in, right? <laughs> and the results of this decade-long evolution is that we have $150 million invested in Palestinian-based startups. We have 40 already VC-backed startups. We have thousands of jobs created. And the employment of the IC sector in Palestine today is at 12%. This is compared to about 3% in the turn of the decade, in 2010. So this is increasing, improving, and the trajectory is very obvious. These are some of the startups that have received international and VC funding. This is not only local VC funding, but international and VC funding. And they are in e-commerce, they are in travel, they are in health, they are in education, they are in many uh, th things that you can see everywhere else. The only thing we don't have here on this map is hardware. Nobody invests in hardware in Palestine because then when you invest in hardware, you have to move goods and electronics across borders and checkpoints, and that is limited due to the political situation that we have and the uh, uh, lack of control on our borders and on our uh, airports or anything like that. In 2015, as I said, we started Ibtigar Fund. This is pretty much, in 2015, was a photo, a collective photo of the Palestinian ecosystem <laughs> in one photo. But since then, it's uh, started uh, improving and increasing, and today I don't think we can fit it in one, uh, in one photo like this. Uh, we started the Ibtikar Fund in order to bridge the gap between the work of uh, non-profit organization, accelerators, incubators, and regional and international venture capital funds. So we decided to invest in the pre-seed and seed capital stages. We have since then invested in 26 Palestinian startups. And out of those, we have 14 that attracted investments from international investors, from other VCs in the region, and have grown from sales locally to regional or international sales. These are some of our uh, uh, startups, as I mentioned. Mashvisor, Safra, which is a travel company, Gamify, it's like a wix of gamification for the Middle East. It's a company that operates today in uh, Latin America and, and the Middle East and others and others. I won't go through the, all of them. We believe the opportunity in Palestine is very positive. Again, it's not a matter of scale, but it's a matter of high rate, rate of return. We have highly educated young population. We have low cost of talent, given the unemployment and the political situation. We have the support and funding system around it, and we have the MENA market demands. I can go on a... a whole day of lectures and presentation about what's happening in MENA and the growth that is happening in MENA in terms of the disruption, the technology disruption of everything that is happening in MENA. But I guess you hear more, a little bit more about that. But that is creating an opportunity for startups coming of Palestine to address the demand in these markets and ride the wave of MENA growth as well. We are now uh, launching Ibtikar Fund 2, a fund that is going to be a $25 million fund to continue the momentum of success, to give more funding for the existing startups in Palestine and to Palestinians in the region. And we hope that we continue to create 
and contribute to the ecosystem. We hope to have competition, we hope to have more than one fund, and but we are uh, positive that this fund will show a lot of results. Yes, no, this one. They do have uh, their uh, uh, senior uh, sales uh, team. All of it are, are women. This is the development team, the engineers, the geeks. I'm, I'm around. I hope I gave you a glimpse of the Palestinian uh, uh, ecosystem. Uh, I'm sure there's much more questions. We are happy that if you are happen, happen to be in the region to organize a tour or a visit for you to see some of their, these startups, to look at other players in the ecosystem. We invite you all to, when you are in the region, to visit uh, as well in Ramallah. Uh, and if you're worried about your safety and security, we have an app for that. Red <laughs> Thank you.